Dubai has quickly become synonymous with wealth and extravagant living. Even 50 years ago, it was a tiny municipality in the middle of the desert. But the discovery of oil in the mid-60s transformed the emirate irrevocably. After previously setting the world record for the world's tallest building, they're about to outdo themselves again. This time, they're building the tallest tower in the world, the Dubai Creek Tower. Today, we are exploring facts and legends surrounding the world's tallest tower. Construction on the Dubai Creek Tower began in 2016. The building process is understandably demanding, and the owners plan to unveil the finished product sometime in 2021. In case you're thinking of building a competing tower, you'll need to have some pretty deep pockets. The preliminary costs alone for the tower are more than $1 billion. The owners couldn't initially decide on a name for their massive investment. Since mid-2017, they've started using the name Dubai Creek Tower, as it's planned to be the centerpiece of Dubai Creek Harbor. A giant model of the tower displayed in Dubai Mall is labeled with this new name. Dubai Creek Tower will be built on a site in the vicinity of Dubai Creek, which is a waterfront area located near the Ras Al Khor National Wildlife Sanctuary. Dubai Creek was historically the city's center of culture and events. So exactly how high will this tower be? The world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa, currently sits at 828 meters tall. The owners of the Dubai Creek property have only promised that it will be slightly taller than its next door neighbor. Those close to the project imagine that it will only be a handful of meters taller than the Burj Khalifa. But this is the culture of one-upmanship that has proven common since Dubai's oil boom. Some estimates in local media have put the new tower as high as 4,413 feet, but this is only speculation. Rather than using a local architecture firm, the owners opted to hire famed Spanish architect Santiago Calatrava. His best-known works include the Milwaukee Art Museum, the Turning Torso Tower in Malmo, Sweden, the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge in Dallas, Texas, and his largest project, the City of Arts and Sciences and Opera House, and his birthplace, Valencia. His architectural firm has offices in New York City, Doha, and Zurich. Though Calatrava's firm has a reputation for going over budget, they are behind some of the most iconic buildings of the last century. When asked about the design of the Dubai Creek Tower, Calatrava explained, The tower is influenced by the natural forms of the lily and evokes the shape of a minaret, a distinctive architectural feature in Islamic culture. The iconic structure combines modern, sustainable design with the rich culture and heritage of the United Arab Emirates. The building's numerous observation decks are part of an elongated, oval-shaped bud at the top of the tower. The slender stem serves as the spine of the structure, and the cables linking the building to the ground are reminiscent of a delicate ribbing of the lily's leaves. The structure also provides a beacon of light at night, with lighting that will emphasize the flower bud design of the building. Calatrava designed the tower with a large focus on energy efficiency and sustainability. The tower will use a highly efficient cooling system, and the water collected from this system will clean the structure's facade. Elegant landscaping and vegetation will encourage solar protection. An integrated shading system and wing doors will also contribute to energy efficiency. The structure will include 10 observation decks, including the Pinnacle Room, which offers unprecedented 360-degree views of the city and beyond. Among the various decks are two VIP observation garden decks, made to recreate the splendor of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The building will also include numerous balconies that rotate outside the facade of the tower. There will be a cafe on one of the three public observation decks, and numerous spaces throughout the building can be used for events. The tower's ground-level central plaza will serve as a bustling neighborhood center, with world-class retail, a museum, educational facilities, and an indoor auditorium. And as of early 2019, the first residents were beginning to move into the massive property. At six square kilometers, the mega-development is almost twice the size of downtown Dubai, and promises a touch of luxury mixed with waterside living. Creek Island, Dubai is the area's flagship district, and when finished will eventually be home to 33,500 residents. Three bridges will connect Creek Island, Dubai to the mainland, and a 286-room hotel with a similar design to Harbor Hotels in Singapore and Shanghai is due to open next year. But there's a complication in Dubai's nearly six-year bid to have the tallest structure in the world. Another mega-rich oil-producing nation is giving it competition. The Jeddah Tower in Saudi Arabia is also slated to finish in 2020. When completed, this gleaming vertical structure will be 236 feet taller than Dubai's creation. If the tower in Dubai wants the world title, even for a short time, it has to open its doors before the Jeddah Tower. Construction on this graceful arrow to the sky began on April 1, 2013, and was originally slated for completion in 2018, but its opening date has already been pushed back twice. Constructing it will require about 5.7 million square feet of concrete and 80,000 tons of steel, according to the Saudi Gazette. 
This $1.23 billion construction project is however already 40 floors off the ground, with 212 left to build. It's undeniably farther along than the Dubai Tower. But to think the Dubai Creek Tower can't pull into the lead is a false assumption. For one thing, the tower is purely for observational and decorative purposes. It will be much easier to construct than the Jeddah Tower, which is actually a building intended for residential living. Despite the fact that it will only hold the title of the largest human-made structure for a short time, Dubai Creek Tower has received much more press than its rival in Saudi Arabia. Many attribute this to the fact that Dubai already has debatably the most impressive skyline in the world, home to more than 65 high-rises over 656 feet tall and counting. Dubai has become synonymous with futuristic skyscrapers and has been a pioneer of this trend in the Middle East. And the Imar Real Estate Investment Group is behind Dubai Creek Tower. They were the same company to pull off a miracle in 2010 with the completion of the Burj Khalifa. This building still stands as the tallest in the world by a huge margin. The architectural height of Burj Khalifa is 828 meters. This is measured to the top of the spire, as its spire is considered an architectural element of the tower. Before 2010, Burj Khalifa's height has long been kept a secret in order to prevent it from being surpassed by potential competitors. Editors. Finally, the owner Imar claimed the standard height of Burj Khalifa to be 828 meters, with a total height of 829.8 meters to its tip, making it the tallest building in the world in any category. Not only did it break the record for the tallest occupied building, it also became the tallest structure in the world, previously held by a TV tower in Blanchard, North Dakota, and the tallest freestanding structure, once held by Toronto's CN Tower. The highest occupied floor is level 154, which is 584 meters from the ground. For public sightseeing, there are three observation decks, respectively on levels 124, 125, and 148. The one on level 148 is now the world's highest observation deck, at a height of 555 meters. The Burj's appearance is based on a flower called the spider lily, which is native to southern states of America, South America, and Mexico. U.S. architect Adrian Smith, who was involved in the design while a partner at Skidmore, Owings & Merrill, has also contributed to a plethora of notable buildings including the Jeddah Tower in Saudi Arabia. The name was chosen at the last minute. Burj simply means tower in Arabic, and Khalifa was meant to honor the president of the UAE and ruler of Abu Dhabi, Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed al Nayan, who assisted with the funds to create the billion-dollar iconic showpiece. The building got some serious press when Tom Cruise filmed on location at the top of the tower in the most recent Mission Impossible movie. Since then, a host of VIPs have made a beeline for the acclaimed attraction, including U.S. singer Mariah Carey, supermodel Gigi Hadid, and soccer star David Beckham, opening its doors with the grand ribbon-cutting ceremony in April 2010, the Armani Hotel Dubai in the Burj offers well-heeled visitors the chance to check into the famous address. The world's first hotel to be designed by Italian fashion legend Giorgio Armani features his signature minimalist style, with muted gray interiors, sumptuous fabrics, and Japanese wooden floors. All 160 rooms and suites occupy the entire 39th floor, with each decorated with bespoke furnishings and state-of-the-art mod cons controlled by iPads. If you book at an off time like a weekday during low season, you can score a room for as little as $400 a night. Not too bad for this exclusive address. But in case you're hoping to move to the Burj Khalifa, it won't come so cheap. The price of the cheapest apartments in Dubai's Burj Khalifa has soared to nearly $1,400 per square foot, according to new research by Arabian Business. Based on listed sale prices, the lowest priced residential unit in the world's tallest building is on sale for $730,000, equating to $1,300 per square foot. With prices increasing in Dubai, people will be forced out of the market. More people will look to rent in the other emirates, like Abu Dhabi and Sharjah, said Craig Plum, head of Mena Research at real estate services firm Jones Lang LaSalle. Research published by international real estate consultancy Cluttons has found that residential units at the Burj Khalifa have risen in price by 113% since units were first handed over in January 2010. The building offers some features in the world of extreme sports as well. The building has been used by several experienced base jumpers for authorized and unauthorized base jumping. In May 2008, Irv Legayu and David McDonald, dressed as engineers, illegally infiltrated Burj Khalifa, which was around 650 meters tall at the time, and jumped off a balcony situated several floors below the 160th floor. Then on January 8, 2010 with permission from the authorities, two men from the Emirates Aviation Society broke the world record for the highest base jump from a building after they leapt from a crane-suspended platform attached to the 160th floor at 2,205 feet. The two men descended the vertical drop at a speed of up to 140 miles per hour, with enough time to open their parachutes 10 seconds into the 90-second jump. Finally, on April 21, 2014, with permission of the authorities and support from several sponsors, highly experienced French base jumpers Vince Raffay and Fred Fugin broke the Guinness World Record for the highest base jump from a building after they leapt from a specially designed platform built at the very top of the pinnacle at 828 meters. And in the world of climbing, on March 28, 2011, Elaine Spider-Man Robert scaled the outside of Burj Khalifa 
Antifa. The climb to the top of the spire took six hours. To comply with UAE safety laws, Robert, who usually climbs in the free solo style, used a rope and harness. While it seems likely to be overtaken by small degrees over the next few years, the Burj Khalifa set an incredible milestone when its construction was completed. It's a full 200 meters taller than the next tallest building, the Shanghai Tower in China, and it wrestled the title from the Taipei 101 Tower in Taiwan. This tower was 300 meters shorter than the Burj Khalifa, and it held the designation of world's tallest building since 2004. Regardless, with the continued concentration of wealth in the Middle East and Asia, it seems like the Burj Khalifa will have some stiff competition for years to come. Many question whether it's physically possible to build this structure much higher than the Dubai Creek Tower, but that won't stop people from trying.